wait was over. Six long years Celtic had been without a trophy, but last season they had their hands on the Tennant Scottish Cup. To keep it, they've got to do what they've failed to do in five meetings so far this season. Beat Rangers. Top two teams come face to face at Hamden Park this afternoon. Our live football is the Tenants Scottish Cup semi final between Celtic and Rangers. They've met on five previous occasions this season, and Celtic still haven't beaten Rangers. Can they this afternoon? It's one of the oldest derby games in the world. It's one of the biggest. Losing, it goes without saying, hurts. Really hurts, especially in the semi finals. Live football from Scotland this afternoon. It's Celtic, the holders, against Rangers, who are chasing the double once again this season. Losing would be awful for Celtic. They're not out of the title chase, but without question, the Cup represents their best chance of winning silverware again this season. Let's win the programme. All of yesterday's league goals from England. Right now, let's concentrate on our main feast. That comes from Hampden Park. We're in the company of Kevin Drinkle and Charlie Nicholas. Kevin, an ex-Ranger, whose Sterling Albion are already promoted this season. So, well done, Kevin. Really Congratulations. Well. And Charlie, here we go again. Yep. Can Celtic win this time? Well, I, I think the beauty of the last five games, although Celtic haven't won, Richard, is the fact that Celtic have, have played well in all the games and came away with nothing. But uh, I think there's a real possibility Celtic can do something today. As you say, I think there's slightly more pressure on Celtic to win today with the possibility that the league is maybe just slipping away. And from Rangers' point of view, Kevin, having played five, they're unbeaten in five against Celtic, do they come into this thinking, well, we can make it six, and, and that little seed of overconfidence might be a problem for them? I don't think they'll be overconfident. Uh, confidence is something you need to succeed. Uh, they've got that in abundance. As you said, they've been undefeated against Celtic throughout the season, and I'm sure they're looking forward to today's game. Um, I am myself, I'm sure there'll be lots of good football. Um, goals, I think that's the thing we'll be looking for today. Both teams trying to get forward and get themselves in a final. I think it goes without saying we're all looking forward to this afternoon's game. Celtic against Rangers for the right to play Hearts, who made it through to their first final in 10 years yesterday. Rob McLean commentates. That's Poynton's corner. There's Dave McPherson's header! Cleared by Michael Watt! When the scraps are around, he'll happily take them. Dave McPherson caused the problems from the corner kick with the downward header. Aberdeen couldn't get it clear. Now, what can Aberdeen do with this free kick? In from glass, up goes Rusi, up goes Duncan Shearer, and Shearer scores! Shearer rescues Aberdeen! Say halfway towards the halfway line. Stuart McKimmy didn't get there. John Robertson will keep this in. Neil Poynton's inside. Johnston's in the middle. There is Johnston's header! Alan Johnston has scored for Hearts. And this match takes another amazing twist. It's Hearts booking a return trip to Hamden against Aberdeen yesterday, who came into that, Kevin, on the back of a 5 0 hiding from Celtic which couldn't have put them in the best of spirits, could it? No, I think uh, it was five going on more. And obviously, we talked about confidence earlier on. They must have been lacking that yesterday. And I think Hearts, with one or two youngsters in the team now, um, full of confidence and, and wanting to, to gain them experiences. Was that a surprise, Charlie? No, not for me, Richard. I was at the Celtic-Aberdeen game. 
and uh, they, they took a severe hammer and I mean they were all over the place at times Aberdeen defensively and going forward they didn't really look as if they had much punch I mean they, they made two good substitutions yesterday Hearts big Dave McPherson who won the header there and little Robo who's renowned for two yards three yard finishing but I think Aberdeen are lacking a lot of confidence which dis probably disappoints a lot of people because they won the Coca-Cola Cup early in the season you yes put them on a, a good conference and probably had a real good season but since that, that performance, that victory, they really haven't done very much at all. And Kevin's team played them in the Scottish Cup earlier, and I think that was quite a close game too. Yeah, I mean, uh, given problems during the day, they had the luxury of scoring an early goal, which helped them settle down into that one, but uh, no, they never ran away with it. Uh, we gave them some problems, but I think as Charlie said, early on in the season, great expectations. Mm. Um, but I think that result uh, last week against Celtic really did take something out of them. And, you know, the highlights we've seen, um, they didn't look as if they mm. could get forward and score goals. All the goals coming late in the game. And the disappointment yesterday, softened, of course, as Charlie said, by the fact they are in Europe. They won the Coca-Cola Cup earlier in the season. Who's going to win the Tenants Scottish Cup? Rangers, 11-8 to favourites. Celtic, 13-8. to Hearts, the outsiders, whichever way it goes this afternoon, at 9-4. to Celtic, of course, are the current cup holders, and this is how they've been defending it. They started against non-league Whitehill Welfare. Van Hoydonk got the first. The second was a long time coming, but Simon Donnelly eventually made it two. Van Hoydonk wrapped things up with his second and Celtic's third. Then it was Wraith Rovers who beat them in the 1994 Coca-Cola Cup final. Andreas Tom gave Celtic the lead with his first Scottish Cup goal. Donnelly got the second, which secured a quarter-final tie against Dundee United. They stunned the Parkhead faithful after half an hour. He scored the second time! Oi Coyle! United are in front! And that's the way it stayed until the 88th minute. They weren't finished yet. Here's Andreas Tom. He's done it! Right the minutes are up. Andreas Tom has won the match for Celtic. Celtic just, and if they want to hang on to the trophy that they won last season, they'll have to beat Rangers for the first time in this campaign. They've won it on no less than 30 occasions, the most successful team in Scotland. 47 times they've been in the final. The semis, no less than 60. And that semi-final record, played 76, 147 of them, lost 12, 17 draws. Kevin Drinkle and Charlie Nicholas are our guests here this afternoon. Right on cue, Charlie. I thought yeah. that was for you for a moment, but uh, there's obviously sight of something going on behind us. So Celtic's cup record, second to none. Yeah. They ended that long barren spell last season. Although the league hasn't gone, do you agree this is the best chance of silverware again? Yeah, I do. I, I think it's asking a lot for Celtic to catch up and Rangers in the title race now. I think this is the real chance. They won it last year, and it was, it was tremendous because it was six barren years. It was really frustrating and nervous times last season and they won it and it took the tension out and I think it's shown in their performances this season they deserve an enormous amount of credit for the performances they've put in but I think the cup now is their, their main idea of getting success and here's the man that uh, steered or in a moment or so we'll be able to get a word uh, with Tommy Burns but uh, before that let's have a look at how Celtic have warmed up for this and it was something of a warm up I think you were saying Kevin the 5-0 defeat of Aberdeen five going on more you said so plainly they were up for this this was Monday night in the league and they tore them apart didn't they yeah I think right from the whistle they got the early goal and as you see there great header and that just started a route I think from there on in Aberdeen are looking at each other not knowing uh, what shape they wanted to play how they were going to get forward or how they were going to defend and you know I think Celtic enjoyed the evening and we started the season Charlie talking about Van Hoydonk 
suggesting, like a lot of other people in Scotland, that he didn't score when it mattered in big games. Yeah. We're not saying that anymore, are we? No, what he's done, he, he took a lot of stick just before the turn of the year. And what, since he got that criticism, he's really responded tremendously well. I don't think he's always been impressive if people want more from him because he's six foot five. But he's been scoring just about every week or second week. So his contribution's been enormous to Celtic since the turn of the year. You know, he's scored what, over 20 goals now and he's one of the first to do that for a long time. And here we are, Jorge Cadet, who can't play today. He could, he was registered in time for the league match, came on and ultimately scored. But, but doesn't get in today, which I think a lot of people south of the border are quite confused about the registration rules in Scotland. Yeah, it's, it's been confusing. This guy's waited five weeks to get involved in all the, the nonsense that goes behind the scenes, you know. The Portuguese FA holding on, taking their time, enjoying a few lunches. And uh, it took forever to get this guy going. But as soon as he came on that night, Monday night I was there, this is a class finish. He's real, he's real quality in the finishing stakes. And this is um, three minutes he's on and he, he finishes like that. I mean, <laughs> it's a heck of a start. That is a confident that. finish, yeah. isn't it? OK, he's ready to talk to us. Let's hear from Tommy Burns, who's with Davy Provin. Davy. Tommy, when we spoke a few days ago, you had four major injury doubts, all of them in the midfield area. Are you quite happy with the shape you're in? Yeah, we're quite happy, Davy. We always knew we weren't going to get the four of them. So we're quite happy we've got uh, McLaughlin and, and Vekost. Are you happy with the look of this side? Because you told me you weren't happy with the midfield balance against Rangers three weeks ago. Well, that was basically doing it myself, David, for changing it. Uh, we tried something that day. I wouldn't say it failed for us, but it didn't work as positively as what we'd hoped. But uh, today, I think it's got a much better balance about it. Both Simon Donnelly and Gordon Marshall have been saying this week that if Celtic don't win here today, all the progress and all the effort uh, will be a, a complete waste. Do you agree with that? No, I don't think it's a complete waste, David. I think we've got to look at the whole thing uh, realistically and see how far we've came, the consistency we've, we've managed to reach this year, the quality of performance we've put in this year. And uh, this is the type, that, the type of game that we've waited a long time to play in, and it's certainly something we want to go and enjoy uh, and just take one game at a time. Remarkably, it's the sixth Old Firm meeting of the season. What has it done for the blood pressure of Ewan Watersmith? Uh, helped you put it up a wee bit, I think. <laughs> but no, no, I think... As I say, David, at the start of the season, we'd have, if we'd known we were going to make the, the progress we've made and play as well as we had done, then we'd have been well pleased. But we know that this, this club is judged on results and trophies, and that's uh, the only time we'll be happy is when we're back winning trophies on a regular basis. Thanks, Tommy. Good luck. Thanks very much, David. Hamden Park for us this afternoon. Live, it's Celtic against Rangers. Part six this season for a place in the Tenants Scottish Cup final. Against Hearts, who made sure of their place by beating Aberdeen yesterday. And later in the programme, all of yesterday's action from the Carling Premiership. But our main game comes from Hampden Park. It's Celtic against Rangers. Sorry about that. Derby in many ways. Celtic against Rangers. For a place in the Tenant Scottish Cup final against Hearts. They beat Aberdeen yesterday by two goals to one. Celtic haven't beaten Rangers in five attempts this season. Can they make it at the sixth? Let's get the team news. Davy Proven is waiting for us. Davy. Thanks, Richard. Well, Hearts are ready through to the cup final after that late and dramatic winner against Aberdeen here at the National Stadium yesterday. And it's now up to the big two to decide who's going to join them in the final on May the 18th. The sixth Old Firm match of the season and one which I think will make or break Celtic's season. And it's two Tommy Burns side which turned first there in the home dressing room this afternoon. Now he did have injury doubts over Phil O'Donnell and John Collins. So they're not available and that means Simon Donnelly and Brian McLaughlin playing in the two wide positions in midfield. Peter Grant and Paul McStay in between them. The usual back four of Tommy Boyd, John Hughes, top, uh, Tosh McKinley are playing left back, Tommy Boyd in beside John Hughes and up front Pierre Van Hoydonk and Andreas Tom. As far as Rangers are concerned, well, Walter Smith had a couple of difficult decisions as well. He must have been tempted to put Richard Goff in. He's decided it's not worth the risk, still going for the championship, of course. Trevor Stephen does find a place on the bench, and that is the Rangers' side. Andy Gorham back in, David Robertson back in. John Brown plays beside Petrich and McLaren at the back. Paul Gascoigne and Stuart McCall in the central midfield area. And up front, Ali McCoist as Brian Loudrop and Gordon Jury for company. Back to you, Richard. Well, Davey, I'm sure there's somebody watching what he's doing trackside this afternoon and making absolutely certain it's noisy whenever he's trying to talk to us. Let's check out Rangers' cup form now. They haven't had too many problems in getting to this stage. 
They opened against Highland League Keith and put 10 past them. Ian Ferguson opened the scoring. Alex Cleland, of all people, got a hat-trick. His third made it 5-0. Ferguson got his third and Rangers eighth just after half-time. Mikhailichenko made it 10 before Keith got a late consolation. We saw their next tie with Clyde live and Clyde stunned them just after half-time. Miller got the second as well, and after that, Rangers powered away. This could tie it up for Rangers. Van Fossen, he was onside, it counts. Here's Gascoigne. That's number four. An unlucky Brian Thompson handed Rangers in the red this time, the lead in the quarter-final. After that, it was all Paul Gascoigne. And a win over Celtic today takes Walter Smith and Rangers a step closer to the double. Only Celtic have won the cup on more occasions, 26 times Rangers, 43 finals. At this stage, on their less than 55 occasions. 141, lost 11, drawn 18. And here is the Rangers boss, Walter Smith, with David Proven. Walter, you had a big decision to make today over the fitness of Richard Goff. Are you going to take a chance with him? No, not today. Uh, it was just a little bit too early for him. He's trained the last couple of days, and I just feel that, you know, in view of the fact that we have got some big league matches coming up, that uh, if we take a chance with him and it goes wrong, we we'll lose him for these games, so he'll miss out today. Both Andy Gorham and David Robertson back in the Rangers' side this afternoon. How reassuring is that for you? Oh, well, Andy Gorham missed the last couple of matches, and I think he's shown over the period that he's uh, the best goalkeeper in Scotland. So it's good for us to have him back. David Robertson gives us better balance. We had no other left-sided players in the last couple of games that he's been out. So it brings him back, gives us a better balance to our side. Is the Scottish Cup still an important tournament to Rangers? Because you seem to have become preoccupied with the League Championship and the Champions League over recent seasons. No, I think it's still a very important tournament. You always want to do well in all your domestic competitions. We haven't done so well in the Cup games in the last couple of years and managed to win the League Championship. So uh, it would be nice to finish the season um, with a double. So I'll have to try hard today and make sure we, we get our way into the final first and foremost. It's 10 years this month since you took the job at, at Ibrox beside Graham Souness. Do the big games like this still grab you the same way? <laughs> yeah, the churning's still there. <laughs> still gets nervous. But uh, I suppose that's what it's all about. You always look forward to these occasions. Two years since Rangers won a cup. Is it about time you changed all that? Yes, it is about time we changed that. I was just saying there, it's uh, been a disappointing fight in the last couple of campaigns. We haven't got anywhere near the final, so an opportunity today to maybe make amends for that. Thanks, Walter. All the best. Thanks, David. Two years since they won the cup. I know there's a few teams would settle for that, Kevin. How would you assess the job that Walter Smith has done? Well, I think, obviously, his record speaks for itself. Uh, seven championships going for an eighth. Uh, here again in another semi-final. I think his biggest problem this year has obviously been the shape of his team. People want him to progress, want him to, to bring in better quality players. Um, right from the start, uh, Stephen Wright went down injured. Robertson's been injured, so he's, ne he's never played the shape of a team that he wants to play, and I think he's took unfair criticism at times. Um, you know, when he ever gets that all back together mm. and the team, then obviously he can only move forward. They are still top five points clear in the league. They are in the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup. It's not a bad record well, at this is, stage. Even, it is it? one of those where people can walk around criticising maybe the style of play at times. They've scored over a hundred goals. Um, if I'm watching the style of play, I want to see goals, and obviously they've, they've, they've given us that. Them. Well, we get a closer look today at two players who came to Scotland in the summer without a clue about an old firm derby. Andreas Tom and Paul Gascoigne, who know plenty about them now. My eyes are open. My love is strong. I am here to 
stay And it will always be that way Paul Gasco in both club record signings. Tom has played two games more this season, scored five goals less. Look at that. <laughs> well, just the once, Gasco in on no less than 16 occasions, and of course he's been sent off in Scotland once. Kevin Drinkle and Charlie Nicholas are with us this afternoon. Kevin, you talked about Walter Smith having problems with the shape of his team. What's he tried to do? What has he done with Paul Gasco in the main? Well, I think obviously he's got a problem with uh, people expect Paul to win it on his own. You know, if he goes out there and, and he's got a shirt on, then he can do it. I think it'd be interesting today, we've got Jory, and uh, if he plays up front on the coast, that'll give Gascon more options. You know, he's a type of player that likes to get his head up, as we see here. He wants to play off somebody, he wants to pass it, go and get it back. Uh, and here he's going to get into the box, so, you know, be, I think, an advantage for him to have somebody up with McCoyst. Um, so we can play these little one-twos on. We were watching him go through his um, pre-match routine, which consisted of about a 20-minute telephone call on the mobile. <laughs> I, I suppose he's a law unto himself, isn't he? As long as he's doing this, no one's going to mind too much. Well, you can see here the, the, the flair that he's got and the things he can do, and there are certain situations where he can win games on his own. But, uh, you know, I mean, warming his tongue up, I think, was about the, the most he did in his warm-up. He'll use that to good effect during the game, I think. Whatever he's going through, he's thoughtful now, Charlie. He's feeling the pressure now. You can see it, can't you? I mean, he's really feeling the pressure. <laughs> he's a big-time player, Richard. This, this guy's played in big stages before. We keep thinking that old firm Davy up here is one of the best in the world, which we think it is. Big time for this. This guy relishes us. He, the last two or three games, I think he's been outstanding, the old firm ties. And he'll relish this this afternoon. It's all a, this is all about Paul Gascoigne. Too. Some felt he was lucky to stay on the last time these two teams met. Jackie McNamara, of course, didn't. He went off. Has he got some uh, something to make up for this afternoon? No, I don't think so. I think it was unfortunate that day. It was just two bookings which had to go. He's been a revelation since he came for such a young man. He's just fitted in there without a blip. He's very positive, gets forward. Good tackle here. He's got good pace. I think the most important thing is him and young Simon Donnelly, both only 22 and 21. Great understanding, here you see it. Donnelly looks up, McNamara's in with a great finish. They have a tremendous relationship, the two of them, for two so young. And now Celtic used to always be very left-sided. Now these two are really making a big contribution down the right-hand side. And he hasn't yet been on a losing Celtic side. Big boost for Rangers this afternoon. Andy Gorham is back. And some feel in the form of his life. Kevin, is that an opinion you would share? Well, again, records speak for themselves. Uh, it's part of a team that has been successful. There's certain times in the game when the manager requires your goalie to do his bit, and whenever he's been called on, as we see there, you know, he's done that. Um, I think the, the defence at Rangers, you know, get a big boost when he's in, in between them sticks. He's see? certainly broken a few Celtic hearts this year, Charlie, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. I think he's played particularly well all season kept Rangers in it quite a lot because I think with the absence of Richard Goff they do miss a bit of stability at the back at times but he makes saves every week for them but especially against Celtic this guy seems to bring them off all the time <laughs> Tommy Burns I think is sick to death of this guy He's so fed up with him and here's the man that won the Scottish Cup for Celtic last season Pierre Van Hoydonk just a single goal then he is the top scorer in the Premier League in Scotland this time around and he's been finding his way through to goal when he's played against Rangers, which will, again, hearten Celtic supporters. Yeah. yeah his, his record's good. He's 
he's really came. Andy Tom's helped him a lot. I mean, he's not scored many league goals, Tom. And he's making a contribution for Van Hoydonk there, but he's a, he's a guy with a lot of confidence. He's not the, the typical six foot five guy who just stands in the box all day. Celtic are a team who like to move uh, Andy Tom and Pierre Van Hoydonk about, and they do this well. And he's a guy high in confidence. You know? He looks a threat every time now. What's he like when he jumps? Andy always makes the point about um, Duncan Ferguson being tall but can yeah. jump. What's he like in the air? He isn't bad. I mean, I think when he first came, he always says he, he didn't really want to get in the box in one headers, he wanted it in the ground. But I think he scored the cup final uh, with a header, and I think he's done that a bit more and more. He's got a bit of the Wizard of Oz boots about him right today, right enough, but uh, he's starting to believe in himself in there a bit more, and he's more of a threat. I mean, McKinley and McNamara get great crosses, and it's it's great service for guys like him. We're at Hamden Park this afternoon. Our live football is the Scottish Cup semi-final between Celtic and Rangers for the right to play Hearts in the final. The sixth time these two have met this season, Celtic haven't won yet. Is this their day? Against Rangers, again, live on Sky Sports. For a place in the Scottish Cup final. And the bookies think Rangers are going there, but only just 6 to 4 Rangers, 7 to 4 Celtic, 15 to 8 the draw. And for the first goal, McCoist, whose only Scottish Cup goal against Celtic, was the winner here four years ago in a semi final on a horrible night. He wouldn't mind repeating it today. 9 to 2 McCoist, 5 to 1 Van Hoydonk, Gascoigne at 7 to 1 with Dury, 8 to 1 Andreas Tom further out this is the gamblers page we've got kevin drinkle and charlie nicholas with us this afternoon quick word kevin who's winning this afternoon if there is to be a winner well, i think it will be decided today you do uh, lots of goals lots of shots on target um, i'm looking for a 5-4 win for the rangers we'll take that well we'll take the 5-4 either way charlie i think Celtic can do it today richard i think it's essential they get the first goal rangers get the first one it's hard to break them down but i think Celtic can do it today OK, let's join our match commentators as the roof comes off Hampton, literally Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Hello, Richard. Hello again, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this uh, Easter Sunday. And I think whatever happens in the game, Andy, that the feeling in Scotland is that Celtic have closed the gap, that there's uh, less between the two clubs now than there has been for some years. I think that's right. And I, and I think that can only be good for Scottish football. It was interesting to hear Tommy Burns talk, and he's quite right. Even if they lose today, Martin, I think it's been a wonderful season for him and his team and they'll take a lot of confidence from it and take that into next year but the gap's closed that's good for Scottish football and games like this mean an awful lot I think in the last five, six, seven years you could probably say nine times out of ten Rangers would win this and you'd be right but I think it's far, far tougher to call now and that's a credit to what Tommy's achieved in his, what, his short spell there Well, the capacity today just under 38,000 Celtic side 5-0 on Monday when Celtic made April Fools of Aberdeen but Tommy Burns has made one change today it's Brian McLaughlin and not Stuart Gray who fills the midfield gap created by an injury to John Collins Phil O'Donnell also still amongst the Celtic casualties yesterday John Hughes the hero of the last old firm clash from Celtic's point of view with that late equaliser he badly damaged a thumb in training but with a strong strapping He's bursting to play. It's a pretty familiar looking formation that uh, we see from Celtic and areas to look for. I think that this central midfield area will be a tough, it'll be uncompromising. It'll be a real battle and a real area to watch. But I think if Celtic are going to win this game, then they're going to win it from these sort of areas. And that's why when we see the Rangers team, you see that particularly on the left side with McKinley and McLaughlin. Now, it's important if Rangers are going to win it that they stop the service coming in from there. I can see two against one situations happening on both sides. Now, the more times that happens, the better Celtic's chances will be. Because if they can get the ball up into this kind of area wide and then provide service into Van Hoydonk in particular, then he could cause problems. There's obviously the movement of Andreas Tom. He'll be moving, he'll be that side, he'll be making runs down the channel.